Welcome back to the Maritime CEO Seafarer Leader Series powered by Ocean Technologies Group. Throughout July and August, we've been bringing you a mini series focused exclusively on seafarers. And today it's time to take stock of the views we've heard to date. So far in the series, we've heard from employers, trade unions, the International Labour Organization, the Secretary General of the International Maritime Organization, and of course, seafarers themselves. They've all been discussing the crew change crisis and how we might improve the working lives of seafarers as the pandemic proceeds. Joining me today from Hong Kong to go through the key takeaways from the mini series is Frank Coles, the CEO of Wallen Group. Frank's been very vocal, voicing his opinion throughout the crew change crunch, as some of these headlines are whizzing past, you should attest. So, Frank, thanks for joining us. What would you say have been the key kind of takeaways for you uh, from this Seafarer mini series we've produced with you over the last five weeks? My key takeaway, unfortunately, is that while we all seem to have a lot of the same opinions, our lobby is weak, our associations are weak, our uh, ability to reach into government for other than just a scant look at us is proving that we shout loudest at each other, but we've gone nowhere. And, you know, despite the British government with a bunch of hooray Henrys getting 13 people together, we've gone nowhere. Um, We need a dynamic shakeup. You know, it's been largely self-serving talking to each other, and and it's really quite quite sad. That's my, my main key takeaway, and yet the crisis continues. And from what you're seeing on the ground, is the worst over? Or, I mean, are the number of crew being repatriated increasing, decreasing? Where are we in the scale of this? I definitely think it's improved, but we were in a pretty poor position anyway. We've still got 30% of our crew out of date. We've still got large numbers of crew over 12 months at sea. You know, we still have most of Asia shut to proper crew changes. It's no better than uh, could do better. If we were at a fail, we're now at a C minus, maybe. So we've got a long way to go, and it, and I don't think this is over for at least six months. Now you're talking at the grades there. I like that. So in the previous episode with Grant Wagner from the International Labour Organization. We sort of discussed the strengths and the weaknesses of the uh, Maritime Labour Convention and uh, what amendments could be made to it. You've got to remember that states have just two more months to submit any updates they'd like to see. And then this, the MLC will actually be updated in April next year. But submissions have to be done by October. So for you, what would you like to see in terms of MLC changes? I'd like to see them forced. Let's start with that. Like many of our regulations, we compromise, pontificate, and and go around in circles. But as Mauritius has shown us, connectivity is king. So if there's any truth to the rumor that this was a Wi-Fi-driven incident, we need to get to a place where Wi-Fi is a right or proper connectivity to the crew is a right and not just a one line in the MLC convention. We need to get to a place where proper work rest hours are enforced. And we need to be much more defined in how long is too long on board a ship. Work rest hours, I think, is critical. And proper seamen's welfare has to be more clearly defined. Because for for too long now, we write in wide open interpretations in any regulation be it crew or machinery or scrubbers and or, or, or. So a little more definition and a little more enforcement, please. Well, thanks, Frank. That brings us to the end of this special series. We'll be taking a short break and we'll be back in September with a new tranche of episodes of the Maritime CEO Leader Series. In the meantime, everyone stay sane and sanitized. 